so we will start the session okay 6:15 let's all be seated comfortably back spine straight roll your shoulders back expand the chest have a wonderful smile on your facial area become aware of the tip of the nostrils feel the breath moving in and out allow yourself to settle down for the class tune in to yourself the moment you are observing your breath automatically mind slows down keep watching the breath gently and slowly enhance your inhalation slow down your exhalations if it is comfortable join your palms in namaskar mudra the heart center om three times breathe in om om सहनावतो सहनौ भुनक्तो सह वीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्वी नावदी तमस्तु माविद विशावहै ओम शांति 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 ही हरि ही ओम श्री गुरुप्यो नमः हरि ही ओम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जन्मादितर चाथेष्विघ्न स्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कव मुह्यती यूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यिसर्गो मृषा धाम स्वेन सदा निरस्तकुहक सत्यम परम धीमहि सच्चिदानंदय विश्वत्पत्ति हेतव तापत्रय विनाशा श्रीकृष्णा वह नम नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये तथो जय मुदीर ये नमस्ते वंस मोर लेट मी शेयर द स्क्रीन जस्ट होल्ड ऑन so can you all see the screen yeah so arti would like to just give us short summary so 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 far we are in the story of parikshit who has gone uh hunting and there he meets uh, 
Shamika, uh, Shamika Rishi, he goes there, he asks for water, he asks for food, he's very tired after a whole day's um, uh, hunting. And because of which now he has gone and there and Shamika um, uh, Rishi is completely in uh, meditation. He does not hear him and Parikshit is tired and he takes a dead snake and puts it on his neck. Shringi, his son, comes to know of this and curses Parikshit that he will be killed by a snake in one week's time. And when Shamika opens his eyes, Shamika reprimands his son as to how he could do this. It was because of Parikshit that Kali was kept at bay, was kept away. He had kept him under control. Such a great king, just because one simple, stupid, uh, some action he did out of some ignorance at that point in time, how could you give him such a huge punishment? How could you curse him in such a big way? So then we discussed about the greatness of a Shamika who was in a completely meditative pose and he, he showed compassion and he could understand the bigger picture. So, so much clarity in his thinking. He did not get rattled by, you know, that dead snake that was put on him. No sense of humiliation, nothing like that. Oh, so what? He's such a great king. He, you know, nothing like that. Immediately, he reprimanded his son for his wrong action. And his son, who was a young person, he, because he was the son of Shamika, he had the power to curse. So with great powers comes great responsibility. But again, that was also true for Raja Parikshit, right? Uh, with great powers comes a great responsibility and even that small action for, we can remember because of the stories only that Parikshit did some action like this, but he had ruled Mother Earth. He had kept Kali and had ruled Mother Earth in such a beautiful way. And this was one exception of his, where he acted like this. Not to think that this was, uh, not. this does not define Parikshit. This is not, this was a, an exception in his behavior, actually. And uh, he was so full of remorse after that. After he comes back to the palace, he's like, how could I do something like this? What has gotten to me? And he sees it and he's very clear that what he has done is a deplorable sin and he needs to get the highest punishment that is needed for it. And in a way, in his mind, he has decided that he must get that, receive that highest punishment and he's kind of waiting for what that punishment could be. I'm sure something is going to happen because I have committed such a big, I mean, absolute clarity about dharma, about what is dharma and what is not in what he has done also and absolutely ready to face the consequences and which comes to light when that Shringi's uh, curse he comes to here through when Shamika sends his disciple Gauramukh to inform at least let him know that such a thing is going to befall on him he, because uh, uh, Parikshit had gone by the time Shringi had cursed him. So now Gauramukh comes and tells Parikshit and the moment he comes and tells Parikshit, Parikshit is feeling relieved. He is not saying, he is not, he is like, this is the right thing to be done. So when you see like this, that is an absolute detachment within himself. He is able to see it. He is a Raja. He is able to clearly see what is justice, what is Dharma, what is Adharma, what should be done, what is the consequence. Okay, I have done this kind of an act being in the space of a king. If I act like this, my subjects, he has a higher responsibility. If I act like this, my subjects can also act. So I have a higher responsibility and I, I, it's not about taking advantage. I am a king, okay, I am responsible. So, you know, you should forgive me. Why is this uh, person making such a big deal? It was only a dead snake, right? Nothing like that. He's clear. He's not trying to, he's taking higher responsibility for the position that he is in. He is not trying to, uh, take some kind of uh, leeway because he's the king, which typically happens. No, in our case, I have power, so police um, will come and say, Mujhe, why give me one free uh, food in the restaurant or something like that. You know, that's not what it is. It is all about responsibility. 
So he immediately, there is a detachment and he is able to see what was dharma and completely welcomes this consequence which has come in the form of a curse for him. And from there, I think we will move on to the next uh, chapter, right? I think yeah. anything else this, anybody uh, wants to share? How this curse was actually indeed a blessing. Yes. And that we will see as we go how it, in fact, that one stray incident that has happened has actually happened uh, for a much bigger cause. <laughs> yeah. And I like the point which you mentioned that, that we are not identifying Parikshit with that one mistake he had done. So that, that becomes also a very beautiful takeaway message or whatever message we could take in that if somebody in our, in our experiences has done a mistake, one mistake over all the beautiful, wonderful things they might have done. It is very important to not identify that person. That identification is not only with that fault. Uh, not only looking at the black spot. You look at all around. You look at the entire tree. They say, right? Don't look only at that particular spot in that tree. Look at the entire uh, thing. So uh, that I think that ident identifying not only with the fault but the, the, as an entire human being as a whole so are we seeing a person as a whole or are we seeing at that particular dot which that person made a mistake you know that i thought it's a very good point for us to ponder is what i was thinking yeah and also in the whole am i doing more dharma and little this is one exception or am i doing more adharma and exceptionally sometimes doing dharma is also something for me to reflect on myself not for others yes very but for myself and like last time we said he never justified oh i i did the, the justification is not there he comes back and is observing like a sakshi baba observed why what he had done you know that he had done a committed an unpardonable sin as it was written in that frame of mind somebody is coming him and telling him that you know what this you have received this curse imagine that it's a curse or some some test result is coming or something it's just imagine such thing we are hearing some some unfortunate news or something like that whatever it is the uh, not only the curse it is it could be anything in our day to day life and uh, how a calamity could be made into a beautiful doorway to heaven is what or uh, I remember Bala giving me the title for Kunti Stuti presentation, right? So over to 18th chapter on the banks of sacred Ganga. Bala would like to read first para. The banks of sacred Ganga. Page number. Page Sorry? number. What is the page number? Someone is asking. Uh, it is chapter. One second. What is page number? Oh God, I, I will let me take the book and meanwhile you read, yeah. Chapter 18, yeah, someone has given, it's 40. Okay. On the banks of sacred Ganga, trained as he was in the path of Dharma and being a worthy descendant of the righteous minded Pandavas, the king was not unhappy at the turn of no. events. He lost interest in the things of the world and welcomed death, which was to him a fitting punishment for his unpardonable behavior towards Shamika. King Parikshit crowned his son Janamejaya as king and abandoning his princely garments, he made a journey to the banks of the river Ganga. There, he spread holy kusha grass on the ground and sat on it. He had decided on Prayopavesha, Fasting unto death with the mind filled with the thoughts of the Lord, he began the preparations for the end, which to him seemed a new kind of adventure. Yes, can you go a little up? Uh, go a little up, up, up. Oh, up, oh, up, okay. Sure. So that we can see the entire passage. When I was just uh, this adventure, I had a nice satsang with Raghuramji this Saturday. Uh, he talked about this adventure very beautifully, uh, so wonderfully. Even after the live session, is uh, that again the fear aspect? Actually, the entire uh, uh, satsang was all about the fear aspect. 
and then um, how we lose that adventurous spirit for example imagine somebody coming and telling me that prabha you have been cursed so the moment we hear such things there is a fear coming what fear comes oh you what will happen to my children oh you what will happen to... so there are so many aspect different kinds of fear comes how will I, will i suffer too much in this curse that also will be there uh, will uh, what will happen to me uh, so there is uh, me here then we'll think about the immediate surroundings all those things so he was saying how from the fear where the intellect starts acting so uh, this so um, so much to such an extent that sometimes it makes us more cautious and more into a, a sankochata state that is in a, con, a constricted st- state of mind so uh, that is the time where we could use our gut feeling again i am repeating what he is mentioning also he we use our gut feeling to think that okay i am having this fear but can i go like do like this so that i think it is a new experience for me let me think it is an adventure for me can i take the step forward to ensure that this also is an adventure and adventure can be can be failure or success is all our state of mind but it is not saying that oh this is a failure that is why i should not have been adventurous because i failed no the adventure was an experience and whatever experience was not to say that it was a flop or it was a disaster we have used these words it was a flop it was absolute disaster um it didn't go uh, absolutely like i expected okay so it, it uh, this this was an experience and we come we transcend the fear that you would have seen here is parikshit had no fear aspect at all he had accepted it he had acknowledged that acknowledgement has happened accepted that he had done this and he received the news with absolute equipoise uh, manner absolute equa- equanimous that's what raghuram ji was talking about how we receive some uh, uh, some news how we receive even looking at the uh, news channel there are so many fear aspects coming into our head and next time when we take a travel we think we have hundreds of the thoughts going because see that news no it happened what will happen to me maybe it will happen to me also i should not be doing like this so it makes us become so cautious that we don't we we forget how to you know live the life with the grace so we have to each time remember prabha because one beautiful thing he talked about fear towards god love towards god he said because i thought in the beginning itself i thought i will tell is because it just beautifully struck fear why do we fear because we are wanting to protect me i want to protect myself that is fear so where what is this here i there is i factor here i want to protect when you are already when you turn towards god where is the i coming so the love the love absolutely erases the i so fear is somewhere that egoistic desire is there that i want to protect myself so when that fear towards god means it is me you what will uh, if i do wrong then god will punish me no no so when the fear is beautifully transformed or transcended into love then that that in that love um, that i is beautifully what do you sublimed or dissolved or it does not exist at all because you are you are directed directed towards that side towards god you are not here you are there you are looking at that person that love is there it's like uh, he was taking about the mother and child uh, uh, mother was so worried i think even aarti i think long time ago mentioned the mother was so worried about always uh, uh, fearful of many facts but the moment your child is there you forget about that so you, you you even a bull is racing towards you you will stand in front of the bull because that time it was not i there it was it it is something that love towards my child it is absolutely dissolving that fear so he was telling how from that iness from that me to protect me 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 you move towards love and then it that journey will become beautiful that blossoming will happen and then you will find that the every experience would be amazing the preparation of the uh, rituals and everything because you're doing with love you are not doing it with fear oh you what if i do wrong what if i do this what if i this thing so much of intellectual thoughts comes 
and fearful thoughts come before instead of that you are moving towards i am taking care i am doing this because oh i am doing it for bhagwan i am washing her feet i am giving her uh, this i am giving her this i am giving her kungkumam kung i am giving her chandana so that makes us into an adventure so make everything into a kind of an adventurous mode not like uh, of course bungee jumping and uh, jumping off of a cliff and all that is not adventure this is more of an adventure so i i felt when you when here parikshit was all ready Uh, so fantastic enthusiastic person that he is ready for another adventure so and when you talk when you were talking about that there is no i in this path no when once there is love there is no i it, that's what um, takur ramakrishna paramahamsa always says right like how the salt doll goes into the ocean in search of itself so what happens when the salt doll starts diving into it to know more about it so ultimately the salt doll dissolves so there is no so this bhakti is such a beautiful path where we our you even bhagwan thins it we don't thin it i think bhagwan just keeps thinning it and finally uh, you know we just dissolve so that is very beautiful where there is no fear so parikshit here one thing that really uh, um when i was reading see it's there is like what arti was mentioning there's absolutely no attachment for parikshit right in fact uh, just to share a personal <laughs> um uh, for me books are still attachment okay <laughs> so when we were looking at the cupboard there is a library there and uh, you know um, my husband was saying why not you see you know see something if you can give <laughs> he was slightly trying to so when i started seeing and i started reading the books <laughs> so i even this small little thing then i said no no this let it be there let it be there for some more time even this small little thing there is i i think it is attachment only i don't know but it is love so when the small little thing is there i was thinking for a raja to just let go his kingdom just like that you know given uh, and with whatever with that predicament you know what in what uh, situation he is in and uh, giving it to, to janamejaya that really strikes me you now it is uh, it absolutely even uh, bhagwan rama shri rama they say right the moment he knew that uh, he had to take up vanavasa okay it is very beautiful that scene rama uh, from his palace is taken by uh, what is his chariot here the, okay so he is taken by him to dasharatha that, that uh, wherever kaike was so and then rama gets to know that he has to go to the forest now yes the moment he comes out yes his facial expressions there is no change but he doesn't take that the, that moment he knows okay now i am not the prince of ayodhya anymore yeah he doesn't take a, the the chariot he walks back to his palace yes whatever uh, you know um uh, uh, the it is uh, very beautifully described uh, people who come to uh, kind of you know uh, serve a raja he says no 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 i will go you know he doesn't take that the, the moment he gets to know that he has to leave okay um he actually starts living that trip like a vanavasi even though he is amidst the uh, riches so that was uh, also very striking when parikshit is also the same way right uh, descendant of pandavas yudhishthira and arjuna all of them he is also immediately he is able to just let it go and give it to his son and he is getting into his uh, new kind of adventure i think or for all of us no <laughs> it is a new kind of adventure yeah uh, you are muted at we must understand this instant thing he had only 7 days mm. so he got this curse he didn't have like some time to come out of it and then you know <laughs> crown janme jay nothing like that happened it was as instant as we are talking <laughs> about it you know that moment he said okay fine now next what action let me go now i have to prepare for my death uh, i will make janme jay the king tak 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 probably you know everything just uh, happened and he moved on because he had only one week and not critical of the situation yeah oh i have to oh, not at all right? also i was reading this have to uh, very beautifully it was written i think mother only had written yeah so she had said that why everything we have to put have to like that she had she had started that way 
huh? oh i have to do this oh i have to go to office oh i have to cook i have to replace the word have to to choose you are doing to choose you have chosen something so choose you have chosen to do this you have chosen to attend this session today you have chosen to do something uh, that uh, take that responsibility of the dash 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 everything is a choice and you have chosen there is no have to there and parikshit was not in that mode that oh i have to now leave oh god i have to i have only 7 days see how god has been so unfair to me i have done so much for every people and still i am being punished still why me like there's so many beautiful dramatic dialogues i can put uh, but um, you know if it was a drama we can do that but um, you know it, so it makes an impact for us because sometimes we do get caught into that right that why me why it should happen prabha that i have done so much puja for all these years but still it happened to me prabha so uh, like that so parikshit was not at all in that frame of mind um the these such personalities gives us uh, like absolute uh, motivation inspiration uh, a, a path to follow to say exactly how to path, follow this path, this frame of mind to you know to go and he began the preparations imagine as if it was a kind of an adventure this sentence is uh, like you know yeah like uh, raghuram ji is that um, uh, when i was listening this have to all these things come all our fear attachment everything comes because our intellect is talking yeah okay and what is the intellect doing intellect is taking an ego trip he very nicely told that ego trip yeah. <laughs> it yeah, is an ego trip swami ji swami chinmayananda ji wrote no bhajana of the ego is the bhajana of the ego yes i i i okay so, i like the bhajana of the ego it was wonderful <laughs> correct that that's what but because he was full of vairagya no the vairagya was there for uh, parikshit so there is no ego trip at all and uh, the trip is what i still uh, for me that visualization comes always with that veil the trip of the veil uh, each time i um, recently today also something happened and somewhere i wanted to post something then suddenly i, I don't know that awareness that veil came why am i want to show myself there so immediately because it's like that whale is nicely deeply inside the ocean swimming very beautifully enjoying but somewhere at the other point of the time it has to come up and show up go up because it has to breathe each time it is our ego each time it has some or the other point of time in our day somewhere we will feel, see that the ego wants to come up and show its face somewhere through our messages through our thought to our thinking somewhere we want to put importance to us to me to i uh, so that that, that that's very nicely he told right uh-huh. um like what you said it is it's not i have to um you know uh, i have chosen to so when we are very clear that an act has been uh, right now i have decided you know and then i've taken this it may be a flop okay but what happens there is when it is a flop our intellect again comes back and says i told you <laughs> okay even though if we had gone with the gut feel and uh, taken a decision and gone ahead it may not have worked but the intellect comes up like that way no it says i told you you did not listen so very nicely raghuram ji was saying okay you how you can kind of pacify that intellect and yeah i also listen to you and this was the choice taken by me with total awareness i faced the consequences that's it it is uh, it was very beautiful when uh, yeah when he told that it is so beautiful See, imagine if an infant or if a toddler is learning to take steps and the intellect keeps disturbing will they ever walk yeah ever <laughs> take a step because intellect will say i told you you will fall <laughs> so that to take that step forward they say take one step and god will be giving you 100 steps each time mother and shri arbindo keeps take okay, telling that take that step take that step you will have the god's grace to give you the catch hand with you so and but you're taking that step with the frame of mind that it is an adventure i will experience whatever it is it is an experience i have chosen it i have myself chosen it is not that i had to i should do it is not i have to do there is no shoulds and there is no have to i have chosen to do this in life i am going to do that that's it so so that's... this uh, whole thing about this change right it is an uh, uh, he 
he is embracing death death is considered to be one of the highest change possible because our attachment to our body is the highest and to drop that body and to leave is probably the one of the most difficult for us uh, through about our life i have been taking care of my health i have been taking care of my all my relatives which are connected with this body and to drop that body and to move away is one of the biggest changes possible so if parikshit was able to do that with so much grace it meant his life also he's lived it with so much grace grace he throughout his life would have done everything as a service right Com- out of complete selflessness that egolessness completely and as a beyond himself which is why it was very easy for him to drop it so that is why the art of death is linked to the art of living yeah the art of death is like that, that grace so this actually this whole skanda is called the adhikar adhik adhikari skanda it is called so who is eligible for such great knowledge it was because of parikshit that you know this whole bhagavat uh, uh, the bhagavata is available to us right now again right it was told to him and everything we will see further as we see so it's called the adhikari skanda so that uh, that that readiness to move on that readiness to uh, embrace the change and uh, accept it with grace and to know immediately that now i will enter into prayopavesha prayopavesha is the process of fasting until death death to not eat until death he says i will get into prayopavesha which is a very properly given process it's not like they will announce it and there are lots of conditions not everybody can get into prayopavesha it is only if you do not have any duties left out if only you do not your death is absolutely um, uh, Uh, eminent there's no other option but your death is eminent and in such uh, cases where you will not be uh, you know there are some conditions for it only then you are allowed to get into uh, prayopavesha everybody and anybody cannot just pick it up like that uh, this thing so uh, he says now i'm ready i will fast until death anyway one week so now i will just uh, go on and in that meanwhile i want to fill my thoughts with thoughts of lord of the lord it's a yeah it's only when we live our life like that we can also face death with such clarity i would just like to mention one small thing here uh, again remembering rama on the fasting unto death here it is okay the death so just connecting the uh, fasting and um, the mind control okay the the thoughts that we have so um in fact uh, rama when he leaves ayodhya uh, until he reaches chitrakoot in fact he meets guha also there right he doesn't take a uh, anything he doesn't eat so because he doesn't eat sita mata and uh, lakshmana also they also don't eat anything they don't eat anything so it seems um when um, i think i don't know if lakshmana or guha whoever asked so shri rama say i think to lakshmana he says you know it is better if we don't eat anything you know because so many it was like parikshit only right so many turn of events in a very short time okay and uh, you know all those things and we, they have just left their uh, birth place and they have come there young boys actually and uh, and with a young girl there sita and they are going they don't know what to expect 14 years of uh, vanavas they absolutely don't know what is there in store for them so it is a lot of that that change that you know that adverse change so when so much is there again putting something in our body what will happen is i will start feeding all unnecessary thoughts in the mind okay so many thoughts will come in so it is better this is also one way of uh, you know that's why we have of course there are um, ways and means to do the fasting it's not that suddenly i decide and do but the fasting has that the food we eat not only nourishes our physical body at the subtle level it has a very uh, uh, deep impact in so um, i just remember that so he says it's better to fast until we reach chitrakoot after they reach the bharatwaj ashrama then only they eat one one way that he chose to keep his mind at to be me
Would like to continue now? Yeah. One second. Many great rishis came to his side when he was sitting on the banks of Ganga. Ganga. Atri, Vashishta, Chavana, Sharadvan, Brigu, Angiras, Parashara, Vishwamitra, the son of Gadi, Parashurama, the son of Jamadagni, Vyasa, accompanied by Narada. Looking on this galaxy of great men, Parikshit was thrilled beyond words. He received them with great excitement and joy and he spoke to them humbly after honouring them. He said, without a doubt, mine is great good fortune. What good actions have I performed in my previous birth that you should all have designed to visit me, deigned to visit me altogether? Now that you have come, please bless me. Who has decided, uh, bless me who has decided on Prayopavesha? The Brahmin boy who has cursed me has in reality been my benefactor since he has made me reach out for the next world in the presence of great men like you. I have renounced the world and I am ready to meet death which is imminent. I have but one request. Please let my ears drink in the praises of the Lord during the seven days which must pass before I reach him. Shall I continue? Yeah. The Rishi said, Descendant as you are of the Pandavas, princes who re renounced the world when Krishna died, it is not surprising that you should follow in their footsteps. This your decision is laudable. The king said, I have but one question to ask of you. What is the course of action to be adopted by a man who is on the point of death so that he can be assured of becoming sinless? The rishis pondered on the question. Some spoke of yaga, others of yoga. Some thought that tapas was the best course to adopt while others said dana, giving away all that one possessed. No one could say anything definite. All these paths seemed plausible, but the king was fighting against time and what could be done in seven days was indeed a poser. Seven days was so short. As for Dana, the king had already given everything he had. Tapas was out of question, there is no time. Yaga has also had to be abandoned for the same reasons as also yoga. Shall I stop here? Yeah, I'll stop here. First point that came to my mind is just look at the events. Parikshit himself was very, very surprised that he, according to him, he has he had committed a sin of putting that dead snake on such a wonderful yog, uh, yogi as Shamika. But that is turning out to be a blessing for him. That itself it is why why is that turning out to be a blessing for him because his mind has immediately turned to the lord if it had it if it was looking at the world it would have turned into a crisis but the moment now you know all these rishis were also coming in what a blessing it has turned out to be because he was able to immediately withdraw from that uh, uh, the world and what is he saying? Please let my ears drink in the praises of the Lord during the seven days which was passed before he, I reach him. He's doing Prayopavesha, given, given off his uh, the thing to Janmejaya, his son. He has, uh, you know, everything he has given up and he has immediately, it has shifted. So it became a blessing for him. And it also shows that it's a, very big design in a way, right? Because that whole incident of even putting it, uh, putting that dead snake, everything is preordained for a greater purpose. If when you look at that whole uh, set of events that come together. Uh, I, I have something to share very quickly. If I want to share one screen for us, because it? this is for where it says um, that page where it said, Okay, I will. 
just it's actually one screen hopefully i won't be kicked out yeah one sec Mm. Well, if you have the BMI chart, will you just share that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I found it. Shall I share or are you sharing? I've got uh, it. Are you able to see it? Yeah. So here it talks about how can he says, how, how is it that I can drop all my sins in these seven days? How is it that I can drop all my sins? So just wanted to give, this is a BMI chart. The base, we are basically the supreme, our uh, substratum is Bhagwan. We are all a projection on him. We are just Nama Rupa. And why do we get this Nama Rupa? Because of our Vasanas and Samskaras, which we have collected over many, many Janmas. And it is because of these Vasanas and this, uh, they, because of these, that we, this part, we have a body, we have a mind, we have an intellect. It is like, this is that white light. It is like this V is the prism. And when that white light comes through this prism, the many colors, my body, my mind, my intellect, this plurality of the whole world appears in front of me, right? So in reality, so but as long as this mind is focused outwards, towards this ego, towards the world, all the sin is attached here. But the moment I am identified with the Supreme Consciousness, with the Lord and my mind is on the Bhagwan all the time, Whatever is attached here has no effect. It just gets dropped. That's how it becomes sinless completely. Just drops. We, don't, we can think like, you know, slowly, slowly the vasana goes away and maybe little by little I, that we can work on it. And then over multiple janmas, we can do, do that. Or if my mind is completely on the supreme consciousness and I lose that sense of I-ness that we are talking about. I is not there. And when the mind is completely here, this whole vasana has no effect. And hence the BMI does not play a role. It is only Bhagwan. It is only Bhagwan who is there, which is, so this whole part is just gets dropped. And because this whole part gets dropped, all my sins get dropped. Just trying to bring that, uh, I don't know, it's a little intellectual, but I just thought how, you know, why that, uh, you know, that Bhagwan uh, uh, Smarana and uh, identification with Bhagwan, especially at that last moment when we are leaving this body, when we don't, when we are completely identified with, with the Supreme Consciousness, our vasanas have no effect, there is that prism is not there and hence, there is no, like the rainbow disappears, only light is there. So, yeah, just wanted to bring the, when he was talking about uh, how can I drop all my sins, right? Because why only those seven days, only immersing in Lord, in the Bhagavan's thoughts, completely being there, nothing else. So, that way the sins will completely be lost. Yeah. Anything anybody wants to add here? So I, for me, you know, I am remembering one story, okay, of Yama Maharaj, Yama, <laughs> it's a wonderful story, Yama Dharma Raja, uh, one day he decides, uh, this has so many ways of interpreting the ending, okay, but, uh, uh, so Yama Dharma Raja decides he wants to come to the world and feel how as a human people feel. He's amazed, what is this people always attached to things and all that? He was always wondering, I don't understand why they are to be so attached. 
uh, why husband has to be so attached to the wife like that and all he used to keep thinking so he decides let me take a trip as a human being so he decide he he takes a form of a human enters uh, into the human world and uh, when he was walking around he looks at a very beautiful woman and suddenly his heart flutters and as uh, usual as a human he goes after her and decides to marry her and he is all over her that is now he forgets his identity as yama now he is all over uh, in love with uh, absolutely enamored by his wife and he was so caught with this uh, you know this attachment or with this desire that that he forgot about yama for some time so years passed by he had a son and then but now this wife uh, first he was so attached to the wife's beauty okay the wife was very very beautiful but as the wife grew older and older slowly the the he was now not looking at the beauty of the external beauty of the wife because the wife was extremely nagging in nature so now every time he i think some name i forgot what was his uh, in the, uh, his human name every time the moment he call, she calls her name he knows she start going to start nagging so before he was after her constantly going behind her behind her behind her now he was constantly being away from her because the wife was very much nagging uh, but um, unfortunately what happened um, so the devas all came and told him you have to come back so now he was not at all willing to come but suddenly he thought ha huh, i will come back because i can be away from her okay so because of that he decides to leave he thought i'll take a sabbatical from this place for some time he just told his wife i'm going out because he was scared to even tell her so he put a note tell the wife that i am leaving for some time so he puts a note and then he goes now this boy has become a young young man and the king's uh, daughter was very very sick so uh, this boy was invited uh, to uh, somehow i don't know through some story something somehow had happened and this boy landed up in the king's uh, palace and the king told that you have to heal my daughter otherwise i will cut your head or something like that and this boy was very very worried this boy then immediately was thinking oh if my father was there how it would have been so nice immediately yama came he said that you don't worry you know what i'm going to make you a very big healer what whenever you go to anyone's house uh, you just look for me if i am standing next to the head that means you can go ahead and treat this man treat this person because the person will not die if i am standing next to the feet then you will know that this person is going to die there is no point you can tell that this is no chance so this guy started following it okay so he became a very popular healer and that is how he reached the king's palace okay so i just remember this thing he re- and then now the king is very but the moment this boy saw the girl the princess he fell in love now he, but when he saw yama was actually standing next to the feet of the girl now this boy was not at all willing he said father i want to talk to you you come this side he said father give me some chance you know you please go and stand next to the head of the girl don't give me i i, I want to I, i really i'm in love with this girl father was i said no no i am not going to be alone he was uh, he was i am yama am i i am dharma this thing i know not like that now then this boy didn't know what to do immediately he got an idea so he, yama was there this boy was there immediately he said oh mother you came i was waiting for you mother father has come the moment yama mahara yama dharma raja heard that his wife has come he decides to escape from that place completely and that he left everything and he escaped and this boy was able to save the girl um, uh, from the clutches of uh, death or clutches of yama so that that is basically yama left everything and ran off thinking are i don't want this my wife to come and pester me again that was more on his head rather than his own uh, you know uh, his responsibility as a person to take the uh, soul uh, from that place so again this was told uh, by ramakrishna paramahamsa in his story uh, books of story and he said that now you could think of what all uh, ways you could think of even yama maharaj yama dharma raja also got attached the 
so and uh, and for him that attachment itself made him leave the duty and run off so where all is our attachment where all you could think of way we could we, we could be attached to this world the human this world is there for us to get attached so how drida how drida nischaya how strong are we to ensure that those attachments don't uh, don't pull us down and how we could be uh, not like yama mahara yama dharma raja like that he has written so just to keep the things lighter i told the story so uh, anyone wants to relate anything yeah tell me bala <laughs> nice funny story so what you told there um this world you know we come we get into this uh, that perceiver feeler think or this we are attached with this body mind intellect in fact that is what they say right this world itself is a means to reach god so like what yamadar maharaj do it is told in a funny way whoever or whatever i am attached to the most god's way of teaching me the lesson is he takes it away from me okay if i am attached too much then that pain that is why like kunti mata says you know we feel the pain when i am so attached and i am not turning to god he takes it away from me when that pain is there i automatically look at bhagwan right all of us at the time of whenever we uh, you know whatever uh, my attachments i lose i look at bhagwan so that is his way of making us turn towards him so use this world as a means so many times uh, we uh, you know people Mm, very beautifully swami aparajitananda says you know we all uh, use god as means world as goal okay pray for this pray for that good job my daughter has to get into good college um, you know all those things okay god as means world uh, god as means and world you know anything even my body mind intellect is a world right world as goal but actually a bhakta is the one who takes world as means and god as goal so every situation everything uh yeah everything that comes is actually a lesson for us from bhagwan for us to go closer towards bhagwan yeah someone wanted to share a story who was that saumi saumi please do share uh, can i share uh, bhagini yes yes please small story this is also about yama only like uh, our destiny is always written and it is bound to happen whatever the case may be that is the this thing so the story is uh, this yama dharma raya he goes to um vaikuntha uh, uh, the kshira samudra to meet vishnu they are having some meeting of all the gods then while going in uh, uh, to the entrance he sees one sparrow and garuda side by side so he just sees the sparrow and laughs and, and he goes inside so what garuda thinks is maybe that is going to come to the sparrow that's why yamadharma just looked at it and uh, he just smiled this is going to lose his life its life in a few minutes now it's happy like that some some thoughts would have come in yama that is what garuda thought and he thought he should somehow uh, save the sparrow because it is so beautiful he thought he should save the sparrow so what he did like uh, he found a place which uh, a dweepa which is far away sapta samudra is far away in that dweepa there is one cave so he thought he has the vayu vega or even more uh, vega than vayu so he can go and he can drop the sparrow there and uh, as we all know there will be one ghadiya for a person to die if that passes away maybe he can uh, you know live uh, further so that is what garuda thinks and yama might not know where i have kept even if he knows he might not go there to save the sparrow i mean uh, no, to kill the sparrow so he thinks and he drops the sparrow and comes back before yama is back garuda is already back so then yama comes back and he says there is no sparrow so he'll be like kind of surprised where the sparrow has gone he'll be seeing then garuda says are you searching for the sparrow he has He says, "Yeah, I just saw the sparrow. Now it's not there. Uh, that's why I'm seeing. No, it's somewhere else." Uh, he says, "You la- laughed uh, while you were going inside. So I thought you like you are so you sort of want to take the life of sparrow, and I dropped it somewhere else where you can might not be able to find is what." Then Yamadharma says, "Like 
why did you interpret my smile that way actually i smiled for a different reason i saw the sparrow here but i knew in my mind that in a few gadiyas it's going to die in a dweepa in a cave by a snake which is a uh, very far away after the sapta samudras i was just thinking how this little sparrow will fly over there and the, its death is going to come over there so you have put it in the mouth of the death itself and now you have come back here so it's going to happen anyway that's what is brahma uh, written on it uh, in its destiny is what he says so this is the story i wanted to share in this moment yeah so this all this makes a very nice story somya she it makes us uh, accept no whatever is going we can't change it there's nothing that can change it the only thing we really can do is to accept everything gracefully that comes along true true and we can only what we can do is uh, like ananya chintayam tomam yejana paryupasate tesham nitya abhyuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham leave everything to him very beautiful It's a very wonderful story, actually. So death is inevitable. Uh, inevitable. That is imminent. It is death is already imminent there. So, and uh, what are we doing here, trying to escape death? <laughs> and uh, Garuda, like Garuda, we are not the doer. We cannot do anything. If we think we are helping somebody, even doctors, they say no, they do it, but they always say we only do whatever. See, I can. It is not only in terms of death. Everything I do. man proposes god disposes they say right so i do but what has to happen i do because i have to do something i'm in this world that's all but i am just playing my part i am playing my role but what has to happen is all ordained by him at the end and sometimes you know we think that we have to keep doing also <laughs> that is also one interesting thing that sometimes by not undo not doing also things will happen and maybe things will flow very well also sometimes we always want to interfere by doing something uh, because we want to do to avoid this and this do want to do to avoid this and this by just being there that steady state also makes a very big very 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 big difference i remember agram ji telling many stories it's not coming into my head but they yeah, are telling about always why we have to keep doing Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Parikshit got it. He was not sitting and doing, uh, 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 planning. Okay, what what can I do? Do this, 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 this. He was not thinking. Shall I do tapas? Make sure that Takshaka does not have the power to bite me. Shall I make the tapas in so that I get an antidote for that poison? He is not sitting here and trying plans like that. So, uh, so uh, I am taking. Uh, yeah, you please continue. Yeah. So there is a question here. so every time we experience any fear sorrow disgust anger does it mean it is stepping from only some kind of attachment absolutely we are caught with caught in that body mind in and intellect body is the uh, body experiences the world mind feels intellect thinks right so when you are talking about disgust anger and all these are feelings they are at that bmi level and when it is at that bmi level i am operating out of attachment it is very clearly i'm operating out of some attachment so oh, it is you have to go down inside as to what that attachment is fear that my child will not be righteous fear that my i mean is it in my hand i have i the only thing i do because i, I can give i can do everything that i want to do i can do but finally it is all his grace that has to flow and it is uh-huh. flowing at all points in time is the only reality yes this fear sorrow disgust anger are like symptoms so the disease is attachment mm. that's all so we need to uproot the disease these are the symptoms not no no point in uh, uh, suppressing the symptoms <laughs> mm. <laughs> no sometimes it helps uh, bandaging it and all that but uh, for a short term but it finally... helps uh, identify that uh, attachment if i am in that fear only then i will not be able to go down further it's only till there to re- like settle if i can handle my fear then i can go down further and see what is my, that attachment of mine which i need to talk right so for that it helps but ultimately attachment only has to be talked. attachment 
to my doership i think most of the time all this fear anger sorrow and everything is somewhere revolving around my doership i feel i have to do i am not doing enough uh, maybe i should do you know it all revolves more around my doership me mine i yeah Simply. it's not like attachment to people attachment to outside mm-hmm. objects mm-hmm. it is attachment to my own maybe doership or my own uh, thoughts beliefs values principles what i think i am that self image again attachment to that self image mm-hmm. brings in whenever that is in danger it brings fear sorrow disgust anger all that yeah we Ego. think uh, we are loving our children too much we love our people so much that is why it is an attachment to something within me it is a me and mine which i am actually attached to here it's not the person in fact yeah yeah so that's why it is said right we, we don't change the outer situation it's not like uh, when i am slowly detaching from uh, children or whatever it doesn't mean that i go away physically okay it is like slowly in the mind things get more fluid okay my strong belief my strong principles which i thought makes me my own identification with certain things are now slowly getting diluted like how beautifully uh, uh, krishna steps on every hood of the i just love this uh, krishna uh, steps on every hood of that kalinga okay he very nicely steps on each of our attachments okay he nicely puts his feet so but he puts his baby feet only he doesn't hurt us as long as and each of our attachment and takes out the venom from that so i think the moment we are in touch with some symptom there if we one of the ways um, which works very well <laughs> is surrender to bhagwan put that at his feet and just completely turn to that omkara that you saw in the chart then he starts the kalinga nargam we don't have to do anything about it he tames us and just like the kaliya we also you know uh, are tamed beautifully by yeah karma yoga do your deeds leave do not expect results because you are your expectation of your results are very limited this is how it should be that we don't know what the result should be what is the right thing we will do whatever that's it now is this thought i will read uh, one paragraph which is very interesting uh, the topic is make the right choices uh, it is by chuck gelozi okay look for the good some of us may be undergo- undergoing great hardships but no life is so difficult that it cannot be made better by improving our attitude same like we talked about karma yoga no matter how dire the circumstances if you look for some good you will find it but how can we find anything good if we occupy our time complaining the rule to remember is that if that we are certain to find what we are looking for if you want to look for good we will find it if we search for something to complain about or something which is going to really going to spoil my life then we will find only that choose to search for good and choose to believe something good can and will happen choose don't be a dope learn to cope live with hope if you can't change the circumstances change yourself we cannot choose what will happen to us but we can choose what can, what happens in us that is we can choose to have the right attitude one in which we view challenges as opportunities instead of problems choose to be positive all for example although if i am confined to a wheelchair for this was a person it seems called w mitchell he was an author tv host and businessman he was confined to a wheelchair because of an accident it seems he said before i was per- paralyzed there were 10000 things i could do and now there are 9000 i can either dwell on the 1000 i have lost or focus on the 9000 i have left so be aware of your choices 
when we act out of habit rather than conscious choice the path we are traveling on on is a rut perhaps even a slippery slope if we don't end up if we don't want to end up at a wrong place we have to be awake we have to be aware and make our choices consciously the best way to do this is to develop the habit of always looking for opportunities scout cloud lee also writes about conscious choice when we acknowledge that all of life is sacred and that each act is an act of choice and therefore sacred then life is a sacred dance lived consciously each moment when we live at this level we participate in the creation of a better world very very happy yes. right yeah it's a beautiful book this is a book uh, called life is a gift living is an art it's a very interesting book my mother in law bought it writings from many spir- spiritual leaders of the world like that Anyone every knows? moment of our life in fact we are living a choice but am i tuck in touch with it as living with the choice or am i saying i'm having to do this i mean you know then that compel but actually we are choosing we are choosing every moment but we are uh, when i realize that i am choosing a certain way then i feel empowered when i do not acknowledge that it is my choice and i think the situation is like this so i have to be like this or whatever i have to do this then i feel like a victim to acknowledge my choice is empowerment the uh, conscious living comes with you know uh, joy and th- there are no guilt feeling there are no um, you know it this should have happened that should have happened Uh, absolutely no guilt feeling no anxiety also so conscious living is um, like that road not taken book uh, robert frost right it is very beautiful that that poem if we see in fact it is uh, so so connected to our uh, uh, what uh, prabha also read now right when we go in that auto mode habituate you know i am habituated like this and i go this way unconscious living yeah every moment is a junction where there are many paths you no know? visualize it that way many paths one is a very clearly chalked out path it is like if an auto mode you go that clearly chalked out path is what we take thoughtlessly okay but in the junction every moment if we are able to pause and consciously take we may take a very like that slippery path you were saying we may take a path which is not formed okay but the that is a conscious choice and when we start walking that path again and again we are again making a new path and the old one which was pakka there will start closing so this is how we progress you know so these um, so the vasanas that you saw are like the the road which is already made okay something is there and i just act like that you know like that autonomous uh, um in our body also we have that right reflex action so like that in at the mind level also when we go with just these vasanas the mental habits which are, we have acquired over gen- over uh, births multiple births so it is a auto mode just mechanical way of living conscious living is where we are aware you know we uh, either choose we can we also can choose to take the same path or choose to take a different path so there my course of my life itself is um you know changed so that is the conscious living and there are no regrets no guilt because i know it is me who has taken the decision okay i don't think someone else you know is uh, mm, has put it on me no victim hood and all that so conscious living is um, yeah arti arti unmute arti this omkara with vasana and bmi chart is also something uh, with chinmayananda ji uses a lot i just wanted to mention that he yeah, fabricated by him for uh, you <laughs> to get across <laughs> vedanta <laughs> vedanta hmm. okay i think we can end because um, when shuka brahma come it needs a beginning it needs yes a yes the next that's a very yes kiss uh, Yes. Oh, Laura, we have to experience yeah. and revel in. <laughs> yes. 
Right. So we'll end. We'll also wait for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Yes, yes, yes. We like Let's the revel in the preparedness and this uh, conscious living and this way art of embracing the uh, living and the uh, art of embracing death and that spontaneity of accepting change in our lives. change is the only constant in our lives that's let us just reflect on that through this week with parikshit as the highest at the highest pedestal knowing where we need to reach and uh, yeah we we'll close the session for today oh असतो मसगम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मात गमय सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्रा पश्य दुखबाधवे ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओ